Hey everybody, Pastor Mark here, coming to you from St. Luke and St. John Lutheran Churches of Central Wisconsin. This video is for May 1st, 2022. It's been a while since I have done one of these outside, and so I'm doing that here today, mostly because it's been raining really hard out, and I don't want to go out in it. That is, I don't want to drive to church to shoot this video. We're kind of in a pause, a lull in the storm, if you will, right now, but it's supposed to kick into gear here real quick again. And it is pretty windy right now. You're probably going to hear some of that. And because this is outside, you will probably see or hear a car or something happening behind me. Uh, we'll just keep going on, though. Because in today's reading, this is the third Sunday of Easter, and in today's reading, Jesus makes an appearance in a very, very special well, actually, it's a really ordinary place. So, thanks for joining me, and let's uh, check out the readings on the next slide. After you read through them, let's then pursue what Jesus does when he shows up in this very ordinary place. So if you read that gospel lesson, you see Jesus showing up on the seashore. The disciples are fishing. Now remember, that's what most of them were before Jesus came into their lives. Before he shows up, most of them were fishermen. That was their job. Most of them had been doing it their whole lives. Since they were little kids, it was the family business. It's what they knew how to do. And now that things have apparently changed, because Jesus died on the cross and, well, then he rose from the dead, he's not with them apparently as much as he was before. And so they're finding themselves, well, it looks like they don't know what to do. Now that Jesus isn't hanging out with them constantly, it seems as if they're not sure what's supposed to happen. So Peter says, I'm going fishing. And that's what he does. And the rest of them go with him. What is there, like seven of them, I think? They're out there fishing. Jesus shows up. They don't know it's him. Uh, they fish all night. It's in the morning now, and they don't know, or excuse me, they don't know it's him, and they haven't caught anything. And so he says, hey, throw your nets on the other side, and they do, and they catch all these fish, and then they realize it is Jesus, the risen Jesus. Now, the reason I want to focus on this just a little bit today is because of where Jesus shows up and what's going on when, it, when all of this happens. The risen Jesus, the resurrected Lord, shows up on the seashore, shows up in the place, and while they're doing the task, that is incredibly normal for them to be at and to do, okay? He is there where they used to live and work all the time. He is there when they're doing their job. Well, it was their job before they started following him, and... The risen Lord, again, just shows up in the most ordinary of circumstances, even though everything about him is now extraordinary because he's alive after he was dead. And, yeah, he does the whole miracle with the fish thing again. Remember, that's how they started the ministry with him. But pretty much it's just regular stuff, huh? It's morning, they're on the seashore, we're in the sea fishing, and then they join him, and what does he got going on there? breakfast. Yeah, he's got a fire going and he's got some food cooking. He says, hey, bring your fish and let's eat. Let's have breakfast together. Now, there's not many more ordinary things that can happen in life, huh? It's just having a meal together or having breakfast together. And yet that's what Jesus does with the disciples. And the whole point I'm trying to make here is simply this, that Jesus, as extraordinary and amazing as it is that he has risen from the dead, he shows up in their lives in the most ordinary times. He doesn't come in glowing and flashing or with angels accompanying and singing and everything. No, he simply finds them on the seashore while they're fishing and says, hey, come and let's eat together. The most ordinary average thing. The reason I'm pointing this out is because that's when Jesus is there for us too. That is... He's there at breakfast. He's there when we're fishing. He's there when we're sitting in traffic at a, waiting at a stoplight. Um, 
He's there when we're out walking or biking or gardening or cooking or washing dishes or doing laundry or going to school or whatever it is, Jesus, the risen Lord Jesus is with you. It doesn't have to be flashing lights and angels appearing and heavenly singing or anything like that. No, there doesn't have to be some big flashy thing to happen to realize that Jesus is with you. In fact, you don't even have to be in church. Now, that's not an idea that you should skip church or anything like that, but if you are able to, please do join in the fellowship of Christians because the Bible says we should. It's good for us. And you bring something to that as well as part of the a family of Christ. But the idea here is simply you can be out fishing and Jesus is there. You can be out biking and Jesus is there. You can be at home doing the laundry and Jesus is there. It doesn't have to be an extraordinary circumstance. It can be just the regular, average, everyday, daily tasks that we do. And Jesus is there. That's the truth of it. See, that's the beauty of the truth that Jesus is alive, that he rose from the dead, is that means that he is with us now, always, whatever we're doing. And so I hope that you'll remember that as you go through your day. In fact, I challenge you, I challenge you to stop each day this week. Take, take a moment sometime in the middle of your day, okay, and just stop and realize, just think about that idea that, you know what? Jesus is with me right now, the risen Lord. And just ponder that for a moment. How wonderful that is. How incredible that is. How comforting that is. That right now, Jesus is with me. Because he is. Because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks and praise that Jesus died for our sins and rose from the dead. Help us, Lord, to remember that Jesus is alive. Help us to know that he is with us each day, all day, everywhere we are. Sunshine, rain, sleep, awake, working, relaxing, whatever it is, Lord, remind us that Jesus is with us always. And Lord, we pray that you would be with those who are hurting, those who need healing, those who are in grief. Grant them your presence and your peace. And Lord, we pray for those who celebrate, especially those from our church family, Dennis and Deborah Kempf, Kathy Gronke, Carla Goetz, and Jeff Humschild. Remind them, Lord, of your gifts to them each and every day and allow them to rejoice in a way that brings you glory. Lord, we thank you for all your gifts to us, and especially for hearing our prayers, because we know that you do answer according to your gracious will. In Jesus' name, amen. Once again, my friends, I thank you for spending this time with me. I hope it's been a blessing to you, and I hope you will indeed stop this week. Take a moment here and there, whatever's going on, and Think about the truth that Jesus is there with you, because he is. Enjoy his presence in your life each and every day.